everyone, my name is Kimberly and welcome to another day on Ray of Joke. Hope you all are healthy, well, and blessed. I like to discuss different topics related to perceptions and behaviors around overall wellness. So if this kind of content is up your alley, please feel welcome to subscribe to my channel. Would love to welcome you all into the Joe K community. Now on to today's topic. In my last video, I talked a lot about self-image. In case you didn't get a chance to see that video, I will go ahead and link it down in the description below. Watching it might even help provide some foundation for this video since what we'll be talking about today is pretty much an extension of that. Like I mentioned previously, self-image is a mother of a wellness topic. However, I wanted to branch a bit into body image and beauty standards today, hopefully not as a repetition of other videos that delve into it out there, but rather to provide additional context to how it exists in our daily lives and the social impact it has. I do plan to discuss a bit about gender, sexuality, and the movement around body positivity. Uh, this is a pretty sensitive route to take with this topic, so I definitely hope to do it justice while still conveying my stances. That being said, let's get started. Societal beauty standards are nothing new. However, with rapidly changing trends afforded by today's platforms and technology, we are constantly bombarded by them. Our appearance erases any substance of character in a single image post on social media. And that's crazy to me. We can see this most notably in cases of criminal activity, comparing people with socially desirable features versus those of less social desirable features. Um, and you can probably guess who people are more inclined to believe are innocent of their crimes. And that is the power of appearance in our society. Where it used to take seven to 12 seconds to make a first impression on people, that time has likely reduced more than threefold. We now live in an age I'd like to term insta gratification, a play on words of instant gratification as it exists within this insta culture. And I'm not dissing Instagram, all right? Uh, I already, I actually really appreciate it as a platform and I tend to use it a lot to share my experiences. However, I feel because of the type of platform it is, it has become the quintessential representation of displaying what our standards of beauty and status have become. Facebook does this as well, but because of its multifunctional features, it doesn't do this as strongly as Instagram, where its main purpose is to post aesthetically pleasing photos for people to like and comment. I think that ends my analysis on different social media platforms though. Anywho, let's get back to our main topic today. I wanna to first start off by saying that topics around body image is and should be a gender neutral topic. After all, everyone does possess a body. However, issues related to body image is usually categorized as a woman's issue, depending on whichever gender we identify as, cisgender male, cisgender female, transgender male, transgender female, gender fluid, agender, bigender, polygender, and any other genders I may have not included. Uh, there are societal standards that exist for how we should look. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to focus more on the extremes that exist on the gender expression spectrum as it relates to femininity and masculinity. This is because while we are growing as a whole to better understand different identities around gender, gender roles, and sexuality, the prevailing ideologies of the world still operate heavily in the binary, men versus women. I wanna first start on my thoughts on why body image is labeled as a woman's issue in the first place, when in actuality, it's a societal issue. It's an everyone issue. When we think what society default gender that all other genders end up having, having to adhere to, we generally think men or the male gender. This means that perceptions, norms, and behaviors end up being heavily programmed to the male standard. 
It's no secret that the world has done more to nurture male growth, build, like building standards around things like intellect, status, and ability. And what I mean by this is that men in society are allowed the space to grow and evolve into multi-dimensional individuals. This, of course, does not mean that men don't have issues with the standards they adhere to. There is a machismo masculinity that prevails and does put a strain on many men for exploring other areas of growth like emotion. However, they're allowed more space to grow and evolve at their own pace into individuals opposed to other genders. It hasn't been until recently where other genders have been afforded this privilege more than previously, with the female gender, of course, leading this charge with women's rights and the women's movement. Women of today have been able to access different opportunities to grow into more holistic individuals, but there's still quite a long way to go. While men are held more to the standard of their achievements to determine their status, Women, no matter their achievements, are still held to the standard of their appearance. And it's appearance that remains the easiest and most visceral cell in society. And there go, we now have us a female problem. This standard of beauty and appearance becomes further amplified on social media, where you're measured by how many likes you receive and your scope of influence is based on how many followers you have. The more followers, the more likes, the more both, and the higher your status in society, at least on the surface, right? And with this focus on appearance, you essentially get an erasure of character, like I mentioned before. And in the long term, we also take away the value of individuality and place it into a manufactured ideal. There's a quote I heard recently um, that really made me think on this a little bit more, that sexuality is less about appearance and more about power dynamics. I found that to be really interesting because it does say a lot about this idea of sex appeal and sexuality as more of a co commodity than just purely a matter of expression. Nothing really new, of course, but definitely helps support what we are talking about when it comes to how appearance relates to status um, and prestige. And companies know and exploit this fact all too well in their advertising. They rely on the presence of modern influencers, lending monetary value to their look and the influence that comes with it as a way of moving their product or service. However, again, this isn't really a groundbreaking discovery, but it does help set up the premise of what I plan to discuss next, which is the commoditization of the body positive movement. First off, at its core, body positivity is something that should be embraced. We all deserve the right to love the skin that we're, we live in and should be open to all body types, in fact, not simply for their appeal or de desirability, but for their range of diversity. And more importantly, we should use that to highlight things that go even deeper than skin, like people's lifestyles, um, people's phases of life, uh, the roles that they play within their community. What really makes a person tick? While the body positivity movement at its core I think has good intentions, I feel like we run into the same issue as before where the focus is purely skin deep. Now what the movement does well is um, a lot of different body types um, are brought to the main stage and highlighted. But the thing about it which almost counteracts that very message is the reality that the body isn't a constant. It's not just a, in a single state of appearance for any given person, it's continually evolving. Our body is not even the same today as it was yesterday. Um, and this is because there are countless cells dying and being created. So again, we're constantly evolving being. It's like each quarter now of the year, we have to remind the public 
this body type is beautiful or that body type is beautiful because the focus is on something that changes over time which is being made to fit into a constant so that being said you always constantly have to condition the public that these are the standards of today this is what looks beautiful and you constantly have to reinforce this idea over and over and over again whichever body type becomes highlighted in mainstream it then becomes the new normal casting all other body types that don't fit the mold or aren't trending aside once again at the same time another conflicting narrative is pushed out now that all body types are deemed lovable, you should love yourself as you are. I agree that you should love yourself, but not as a result of society giving you the green light to do so. I also don't agree with the unwritten disclaimer, therefore, you should have no problems with the way you look. Because, again, all body types have been deemed lovable and we celebrate all body types. I have a problem with this because whether or not society is accepting of all body types, people will still have insecurities about their body. And it seems almost to invalidate those insecurities. Another interesting twist of selling this image of the normal body look is that it also places people who've had their bodies either digitally augmented or physically augmented in an awkward spot. What's not considered natural is therefore reprehensible because we accept all body types as they are in their natural state as they are. Then we get into this us versus them dynamic, which is never to our benefit, but always seems to benefit the companies who profit from conflict. The more reactionary, the more profitable. Whether you've had your body augmented in any way or haven't should again have no bearing on the individual. Why should those who choose to enhance their features be deemed to love themselves any less or be any less authentic than those who don't? I remember when I was putting my makeup on one day, really proud of my work, with dressing up my eyes, my lips, and then someone had the nerve to say, why did you put on all of that? I like you just the way you are. And I'm sure it came from a place of good intentions, but now I'm thinking, well, that's great, but I didn't put this on for your approval, but for my own pleasure, thank you very much. However, I just responded, well, I worked hard on it, I like it, and you'll have to deal with it. If someone wants to alter their body or enhance their features to be more in line with how they want to express themselves, what's the problem if that's not the goal? Let's stop trying to put people into these unevolving boxes, standardizing appearances. We should celebrate body diversity while also highlighting the realities of body insecurity. We should acknowledge that we evolve and we should bring to the stage all the things underneath the skin. Beneath it all, you and I are people living and capable of more things than what society says we are. So hope this topic helped you and you feel a little bit more empowered on your journey. I've included some links below to a few videos on this topic that I happened to watch um, previously and recently and just thought they'd be good to share in case you wanted to delve into the issue even more for your own research and benefit. There's no shortage of information and perspectives out there on these issues, and there is plenty of source material to explore to build a better relationship with this. So with that, feel welcome to you know hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and comment down below. If there's a topic you would like me to offer insight on, uh, I encourage you to let me know. Also, if you're interested in following my, my journey up close and you're interested in any additional content on personal growth, feel free to um, follow me on social media and you can find my details in the description below. Until next time, stay golden, my wonderful warriors.